everybody, welcome back to the Insightful Thinkers Podcast. Some people seem to post everything on social media, and others remain private. I myself contemplate whether to post certain things or to keep them private, and some of these types of ideas got me interested in what motivates people to post on social media, not just Pers- people's personal ideas about why people post or why they post or anecdotal responses, but what is kind of the scientific um, evidence that shows why people post on social media? In this scientific research, social media self-disclosure is the term used uh, for posting on social media. So this is the term you'll hear me refer to quite a bit in this episode. Self-disclosure can be conceptualized as any message about oneself that an individual communicates with other people. So this includes like posts, status updates, tweets, and all sorts of different things. So we're going to be talking in this episode about some of the reasons people post that have been supported by science, and we'll talk about the relationship between posting on social media and well-being. Does it actually have a positive benefit on people for posting? Obviously, people perceive a benefit because, or else they wouldn't post at all. But are there actual uh, supported benefits to well-being from posting? The primary source for this episode is a 2020 meta-analysis article from Luo and Hancock. So fairly new, which is great. And it synthesized, a meta-analysis synthesizes data from a number of different independent studies and on the same subject and so it determines trends and in the data so what are the proposed benefits in posting on social media according to the literature so first of all the first benefit people seem to get is a a, a connectedness they get from posting perceived connectedness refers to the feeling of relatedness with one another in their lives Much research suggests that feelings of social connectedness or belongingness, social inclusion and acceptance all have positive effects on well-being. This is no surprise, Um, but social exclusion on the other hand and isolation have negative impacts on well-being. So again, no surprise. Now, this is where we bring in social media or the researchers bring in social media. So since social media allows for public disclosure and disclosure often results in in interpersonal connections, um, this improves well-being because there's more of a, there's a feeling of connection that is generated from disclosing in public. So you feel connected with other people. Research shows that Posting status updates about personal daily experience can increase connectedness, which in turn reduces loneliness um, and so on. But in contrast, individuals constrained from posting, they they didn't in one of these studies where they prevented individuals from posting for a certain period of time, these individuals uh, were found to have a lower sense of belongingness or connectedness. So it does seem like There's at least a perceived connectedness that is generated when uh, inside of people, when they post, they feel more connected to other people. They feel more accepted. They feel more included. So this is part of the reason why people seem to post. Um, And we're going to tie this all in later to if, if it genuinely, if this perceived connectedness genuinely is translating to Um, actual connectedness and who are the types of people who feel the need to post and we'll get more into the weeds but right now we're just starting off with the general benefits or perceived benefits people seem to get from posting kind of related to this perceived connectedness people also feel a sense of social support when they when they make posts on social media social support refers to the social benefits that people perceive and actually gain from human interactions Social support can have positive impacts on psychological well-being as it creates positive feelings, a sense of predictability and stability, and a recognition of self-worth. Because social media allows for public disclosure and makes feedback so prominent through the comments and the likes that we know so well, these forms of one-click communication, um, disclosers may perceive higher levels of social support when they post because you can quickly receive this social feedback and 
a good post that gets a lot of likes gets a lot of, a lot of support through the form of these one click likes or comments and people hyping you up and things like that. So you, you feel you get a sense of social support from it. Shown in recent studies, perceived social support attained from networking on social media can improve online social well-being. It can reduce psychological distress, such as depression and loneliness, and it also predicts higher levels of self-esteem and happiness. So, people do seem to not only get a connection from, from posting on social media and, and, and feel less excluded because it's social media, or, or so they say, even though... <laughs> People have the ideas that it's actually anti-social media because every time you do post, you are inherently taking away time from actually being with actual people and, and, and enjoying a time with those people. And if you're, uh, imagine if you are, you're having a, a time with your friends, but you're, you're, you're taking a picture just so you can post it and you're posting it while you're hanging out with your friends. You're actually being antisocial, even though you're engaging with social media, but, um, I digress. So you, you can get a, a perceived connectedness from this social media, although you're disconnecting from your friends in that moment, you're connecting with all your other friends online, even if it is through these one click mechanisms through comments and likes, and you also get some social support, um, from these, from these people who are who are possibly commenting on your photos and this does seem to produce higher levels of self-esteem when you do this and it reduces it seems to reduce depression and loneliness at least briefly um, and it does correlate with happiness so this is another reason why people post the third main reason seems to be something to do with this thing called capitalization people feel more positive when they share positive emotional disclosures and more negative when they share negative disclosures so this this is the phenomenon that's referred to as the capitalization process this capitalization process suggests that expressing personal thoughts and emotions has effects on psychological well-being because it increases the salience and the significance of the events and allows people to almost rekindle their memories about the events during the course of expression all this to say that uh, let's take the example of when you're hanging out with your friends let's say if you actually post a little bit after hanging out with your friends. So you hang out with your friends, you, you make a big post, you go hiking, whatever. You take a picture um, and then say next week you're doing, you're editing it, you're, you're getting ready to post it. In that moment, you, there's this capitalization being created. You're capitalizing on these positive thoughts that are being rekindled while you're generating the post and you're remembering how fun it was with your friends when you're editing the photo and oh look how beautiful the mountain was and you're rekindling these positive feelings you're capitalizing on these these positive emotions when you're when you're posting these things and given the positivity norm of an internet culture the positivity norm that everyone knows of you always post your best side. You never post yourself at your worst. It's always at your best. Given this positivity norm, positive disclosure often occurs more frequently on social media. And this predicts positive feedback and then more social support, which in turn increases feelings of connectedness. So we're, we're skewed towards this idea of posting more positive things. This is the positivity norm. And because of this, even though we tend to look on this negatively sometimes when we say, oh, social media, it, it can cause a lot of anxiety because um, people are only posting themselves at their best. So we, we look at these people and we think they're perfect people and all these things. And th there is an argument to be made that the positivity norm generates some bad feelings and at least the viewer of the post, because if they're not feeling so well themselves and then they see this perfect person who's who's following the positivity norm and only posting positive things, they're going to feel perhaps bad about themselves. But on one, on the other hand though, the positivity norm does seem to have a positive impact on the poster because when you're posting positive things yourself, uh, it, it creates more social support. You, you do get more likes, you do get uh, perhaps more comments, more, more social support in the form of these likes and comments and this does increase feelings of connectedness it has shown in the research so this positivity norm does drive some positive feelings when people are are posting positive events they're rekindling positive feelings and that's at least good for the poster it seems 
Similarly, kind of on the other side of things, negative disclosure, so um, like negative status updates or negative posts may discourage others from providing public responses. While receiving feedback can enhance self-esteem, a lack of feedback due to more negative posts may lead to a sense of ostracism. So, the, the, this kind of shows why this positivity norm of internet culture actually is helpful in some ways because it encourages more people to post their positive side and that does not only rekindle these good feelings when you're posting a positive thing, um, it creates more feedback and, and it, it can enhance your self-esteem because it creates more public responses. If you're, if you actually want to try to post yourself on your, your bad days and post your bad side, it's a noble effort, but it actually may not be so great for you perhaps because you, you may get less feedback. You may, it may actually lead to a sense of ostracism in a way. Um, and, and this kind of is this explanation for why people post our good side. It's, it's not too complicated. It doesn't seem it, it, posting you at your best. Uh, allows for a greater chance you'll get positive feedback from likes and comments. Um, it also allows the poster themselves to feel better, as we've kind of touched on. Remember when uh, we talked about how posting increases the salience and significance of events in that moment and allows you to rekindle your memories about the events during the course of your posting. While I'm posting about my hike, uh, which I've actually never done, but while someone is posting about their hike or about their event, um, they rekindle those positive feelings. So this is why, um, this is another way, uh, this is another reason people post because they get the benefit of capitalization. They're capitalizing on these good feelings that they're rekindling. Now, what are the motives behind self-disclosure or posting on social media. There seem to be two different types. So there's interpersonal motives. So this is developing like uh, relationships with others. Inter is between people and there's intrapersonal motives. So these are motives solely due to self-expression. Intra is within oneself. So let's talk about the interpersonal motives, motives for almost building relationships uh, in posting. Disclosure driven by relational development seeks to increase closeness with another person. So interpersonal motives are for posting are motives for posting that the poster is looking to increase closeness with, with other people and develop almost develop more connections and feel connected. This motive is associated with more frequent self-disclosure in social media and predicts more positive and honest disclosure. When you're so disclosure driven by wanting to connect and develop relationships with others is associated with more honest and positive posts. So this just means that there are more posts, um, more posts come from those who are posting to feel a connection with others and more positive posts come from these types of people. According to the social compensation theory, the more relationship building, um, Excuse me. So, according to the social compensation theory, the relationship building goal of disclosure might be more prominent among people with social distress. So, people with loneliness or social anxiety because they possess stronger needs for connection and affiliation than their counterparts. So, indeed, the research has shown that lonely and socially anxious people have actually been found to be more willing to disclose on social media than non-anxious people. People with low self-esteem have been shown to disclose a wider variety of topics on Facebook than those with high self-esteem. Lonely people were also found to be more likely to disclose on social media due to their stronger motives for social compensation and social networking. So it could be the case that it's actually the most lonely and anxious people, according to the social compensation theory, that are the ones who post the most because they almost feel uh, a need to compensate for the lack of social connection they re they feel in their actual day-to-day -day lives. So, these are the people, according to the social compensation theory, um, and a theory is just something it's been supported uh, over and over kind of in the research by different experiments. So, this is not just some 
ran, random idea from one person. This is this seems to be, it could be the case. We will talk about a competing theory near the end of the episode that goes against the social compensation theory. But according to to this one, um, the some of the people who post might be the ones who. Uh, are higher in psychological distress and loneliness and social anxiety. They need to compensate for this by posting and receiving some type of feedback for, um, for what they're going through almost and, and compensate for these negative feelings. It's an interesting, it's an interesting idea. And, and some research has supported this. Now, these are the interpersonal motives, these motives for the people who they need to feel more of a connection with others. So, this is why they post and perhaps these more anxious people who aren't feeling connections and these more lonely people who aren't feeling these connections, they need to, they have these interpersonal motives to connect with others through posting. Now the intrapersonal motives are the people who post simply because they want to express themselves. They have motives within themselves to post. Disclosure driven by self-expression on social media seeks to express feelings and thoughts and release pent up feelings almost in a way. So research on disclosure argues that people with psychological distress are drawn to self-expression because they can release pent up feelings through this self-expression. So in the first case with the interpersonal motives, they're trying, they're posting to feel a connection with others. The intrapersonal posters are posting to almost self-express to almost get a release of these pent up feelings. It's all, sometimes I have found that it's like you, you do feel something and it's almost like you want to post it to, sh to release it. You almost like you need to share this feeling and express yourself with others. Perhaps just look at the podcast as an example. I'm not, I'm not just going to record this and keep it all for myself and watch it over and listen to it again. It's almost like we, as humans, you do feel the need to self-express. It's almost a natural tendency. So maybe this is the same mechanism that's happening with posting as well. It's when you get a feeling or you have an idea or, or a thought, you just want to post it and, and, and re get that release in support of this idea that people, um, are drawn to posting to express themselves. Research has revealed that higher levels of stress triggered greater amounts of self-disclosure on social media. So these people who needed a release, they actually were found to post more. A possible reason for this may be that people with low self-esteem perceive social media as a safe medium for self-expression and a more appealing place for getting attention and support than real life interactions. So if you uh, do have low self-esteem and it is more difficult for you to be at the parties, be at the clubs, be at the bars, be at all the social gatherings. Um, but you have a, a decent enough community on social media. You can tailor, you can edit the post perfectly. You can be, you're more in control of how you're perceived. And maybe if you have low self-esteem, it is a safer medium to self-express and, 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 and getting attention than in real life interactions. Now, unfortunately, these intrapersonal motives for uh, mo for people who need a release uh, are likely to encourage negative social sharing. So these people who post because they need a release seem to post more negative things. And this contrasts with the people we talked about first who who post to feel more connected with others, the interpersonal motive people, those are the people who are more likely to post more positive things as we touched on. Um, research has found that people in people with low psychological distress disclosed more positively, whereas those in high distress tended to disclose more negative and less honest information. So these people who have a lot of pent up feelings and are high in distress, they seem to post um, more negative things and also less honest things. And they post, maybe they post more fake things and they, uh, they're not totally honest with who they really are on social media with the people who are really high in, in psychological distress. This negativity effect appears to take place on image based social media platforms as well, like Instagram. A recent study showed that depressed individuals were more likely to post darker, bluer and grayer images than healthy people, presumably matching how they perceived their world, which is very interesting. So in conclusion, these studies suggest that self-expression motives, um, 
may drive negative disclosure among people suffering from psychological distress. So depending on your motives for posting, that is going to uh, drive what, whether you're going to disclose positively on social media or negatively. We talk the intrapersonal people who are motivated by if they have a lot of distress and they need a release, they're going to tend to post more negatively um, and less honest things. The people who post to feel like can, more of a connection with others, they post more positively and, and more honest things. So let now putting together these results now on inter versus intra personal motives for self-disclosure on social media. So po posting to feel a connection to others, post things with a positive skew. So for instance, you post yourself in your best light on Instagram and you tweet positive things. If you're posting to release pent up feelings, you post things with a negative skew. So you post darker images on Instagram and you have more negative tweets. And remember, this does not automatically mean that if you are posting to release pent up feelings, you're always going to post negative things. It's just in the data overall in the population, it's skewed negative. So the average, the average poster who is uh, really posting to release pent up feelings compared to the average poster who's posting to feel a connection with others is, is posting more negative things. So taken together, the research suggests that well-being states, so however you're feeling inside, shapes your self-disclosure characteristics. So these well-being states shape how you post and interact on social media. Also, the, the conclusion from these m motives for posting studies is that people with low self-esteem seem to post more to compensate for their feelings of inadequacy and, and, and possible feelings of disconnect with others. So social, because social media is a safer and more appealing medium for receiving attention and support, people with, with high anxiety, um, they're able, they resort to posting to, to connect with others rather than actually connecting with others in real life, because you're still getting the attention and support, uh, without that more, uh, risky interaction of truly exposing who you really are in real life interactions. It is very interesting. Now, what's kind of the application for some of this research? So, can distressed individuals that there are so many, everyone is distressed at least to a certain extent in this world. No one lives without any distress at all. But the question, I guess, for this episode is, can distressed individuals benefit from posting more often? This meta-analysis, so many studies, in other words, seem to suggest that it may be difficult for distressed individuals to benefit from posting more often. First, reason for this is because d distressed individuals may be less honest in their disclosures online. So, positive well-being corresponds to accurate and authentic self-disclosure as we kind of touched on. Whereas negative well-being, if you're not feeling well, it's associated with posting your false self on social media. Recent evidence has shown that accurate and authentic self-disclosure can benefit general well-being and it can improve self-esteem. If you're posting who you really are um, and, and you're not putting on a, a mask, a guise, and, and, and you're being open and honest on there, then it, it can actually benefit your well-being, maybe because it is giving you a genuine release. Uh, it is also shown to predict greater perceived social support, as we kind of touched on, because if maybe if you post who you really are, people see that and maybe they like it more and they accept it more. Um, and, and these are contributors to your overall well-being. But on the other hand, if you're posting your inaccurate and your inauthentic self, it makes people feel less socially connected and it, you actually get more stress is what the research shows. These are the factors that may lead depressed individuals to feeling even more depressed and less connected when they post because they're not posting their true selves. So, they not only... They feel even more disconnected because they're feeling inauthentic and because they're being inauthentic and they also feel and receive less support from others. Because remember, accurate and genuine posting has been shown to predict greater social support, but inaccurate posting um, and, and if you're not being genuine, you get less support on there. 
So maybe it's almost that people can see through you when you're posting stuff that is, is not genuine to who you really are. It's almost as if people can see through that and they can see through these po- falsely positive posts that only serve to, uh, express the false self of depressed individuals. And, and maybe this is what end up, what ends up giving these depressed posters less likes and less social support because people can see that they're not being authentic on there. So it doesn't seem like depressed individuals can actually gain too much in terms of well-being from posting. It may be short term, but it, it, it won't help them in the long term, perhaps because they're more likely to post inauthentic things. And this gets you away from who you really are. So you feel less authentic. And then you might even get less likes for the inauthentic content you're posting as well. Now, let's build on this to figure out why else posting doesn't help the well-being of depressed individuals. Well, disclosures from low self-esteem people uh, have been found to be more negative which received less responses and was generally not liked by others. This is found in research. And it goes back to the interpersonal versus intrapersonal motivations for posting on social media. If you have the intrapersonal motivation, if you're posting to release your pent up feelings of depression and, and anxiety, these you may end up posting negative things. And these negative things you post are not as well perceived by others. You get less likes. On the other hand, if you're posting to connect with others, you tend to post more positively uh, and you're not posting to release your negative pent up feelings. You're just posting for a connection. You tend to post more positively and this is more well received, more liked, uh, more well liked by others. This follows the, 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 uh, positive skew of social media that, um, and even though it's following this, this trend of only posting your best self and your positive self, you do get more support from others by posting those things. Um, also, posting doesn't really help distressed individuals in the end due to the false self idea. Whereas positive well-being corresponds to accurate and authentic disclosure, negative well-being is associated with posting the false self. And as mentioned, this leads to depressed individuals feeling even more depressed. So <laughs> it's interesting. It really is interesting because it clearly plenty of depressed individuals are still posting. So obviously they're getting some, they're feeling some benefit out of it. But the question is when we get into the broader picture, we, we think, we think in a <laughs> more of a meta way about social media this might is might be what starts the spiral. Maybe they get a short term boost from these posts and whatnot, but overall well being it doesn't help them at all because in the end, now they have a big collection of 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 their false self on social media, and that gets them away from who they really even are. They get even more disconnected and they start this negative spiral. And, and this is when you start to see the real issues with social media come out when you're getting these short term gains from posting, but overall your well being isn't really helped. And the research is showing that um, your well being doesn't, it doesn't seem to help your well being to, to be posting like this as a distressed or depressed individual. Um, so if you were to stop reading here, reading the article here or listening to this episode here as a depressed individual, you would, you would stop posting completely because you would realize that overall, this isn't going to help my well being. but there's a caveat to this always with research. There's a caveat to everything. And there is the idea of, there's a caveat to the idea that posting can't help the depressed individual at all because other research has suggested mechanisms that linked even negative posts to well being. Even those negative posts, you're, you are getting a release and perhaps you're even getting plenty of likes and comments and a reaction too. So, and as we mentioned, these depressed individuals are getting something from posting because they, plenty of them still do it. So there's some benefit coming in. So maybe it does help their well being. But now we're going to go even one step deeper. So, uh, to the idea that, that posting negative things does increase well being. Or there's a caveat to the caveat even. So, although research has suggested mechanisms that linked negative posts to well-being uh, and posting while depressed to well-being, um, it, it may not be such a tight relationship. 
Although depressed participants have been found to obtain more social support from sharing negative things, they failed to perceive the wealth of this support compared to healthier disclosers. So yes, it does get the depressed in posting does get the depressed individual more of a reaction or a same or more of a reaction than the positive poster, but the depressed individual can't perceive the extent of support they even get compared to the positive posters. Maybe the positive poster got the same amount of likes or even less, but at least the positive poster was able to appreciate the support they were getting and every like, maybe they were able to take it in more. Whereas the depressed individual, maybe they needed 10 likes to feel the same way as the positive individual felt when he or she got one like. So there is the idea that maybe posting does help the depressed individual, but then it, there's more research that contradicts that as well, that no, they didn't even perceive um, the support they were getting as well as, as the person who was posting positive things. So this to me, I've mentioned this before, is the beauty of research because it, you can't really be glued to one idea. For any idea you have, there will be an idea that will go totally opposite to it. And it'll probably have plenty of support as well, uh, by plenty of different researchers all around the world. So you have to put your pride aside and, and you just got to go by what the, uh, not necessarily what the majority is saying, but you have to take in what each side is saying uh, to be able to do objective research. So with, with all these things, it may confuse for, for, for every person who thinks this is the beauty in research, there may be another person who, who may just be confused by all of this and say, is there even an answer to all of this? Maybe not, you guys. That's the nature of research. Uh, why exactly do people post? We don't really know. We've seen evidence for the social compensation hypothesis where that expects lonely and socially anxious people to use online communication more frequently. But even here's another contradicting hypothesis. There's also the social enhancement hypothesis. And that predicts that it's actually the socially competent individuals that consider social media posting because they see it as an additional uh, avenue for social interactions and just another way to connect. It's actually the most positive, uh, most socially competent individuals who are posting plenty. It's not just the negative, the uh, anxious and, and uh, depressed people who are posting because they, they need some kind of support and they need likes. I'm sure there are plenty of those people, but maybe there are plenty of uh, socially competent people who are just posting for that connection. They've got their friends on there. So, you can look at it either way. There's evidence for both sides. Science doesn't have the answer to everything, especially something as complex as posting on social media. Um, we may never know the general effects of social media on our behavior, let alone the effects of posting. That's just a specific uh, facet of social media. We don't even really understand the effects of social media in general on our behavior. So, um, on one hand, maybe it's the most insecure people who post because they're trying to bolster their sense of self through likes and social support, as, as suggested in the article. On the other hand, maybe it's the most secure people who post, seeing as they are confident in sharing themselves with the world. Both types of people likely exist. Whichever one you are, though, I would say just remember, social media is not real life. When you're hanging out with your friends and... If you're going on social media to post that very event, you're not really hanging out with your friends, are you? You're interacting slightly with your friends on social media, but it's not real. It's it's on a screen. It's not real life. Maybe it's best to be neither of those people and just live without it completely. Who knows? Um, this this episode examined the effects of posting on well-being, but I know we all wonder what the effects of getting off of social media entirely would have on well-being. Thank you for listening to this episode, everybody. We're growing our community through word of mouth. So if you like this episode, let one person know about it. If you want us to grow linearly or tell two people about it, if you want us to grow exponentially, you can also rate, like, comment, subscribe, follow all of those things that you guys know so well. Those are just help, all the social media things. Um, they just help us with the discovery algorithms. But whatever you do to support, listening and watching is always plenty, you guys. Thank you. I can't thank you guys enough for tuning into the Insightful Thinkers podcast every time. 
um, you guys are tuning in and uh, I appreciate that. I really do. I love, I love doing this. I said from episode one, we're not stopping anytime soon. So um, I'm really doing it just for me. <laughs> I'm doing it for myself. Uh, it's for the vision that I mentioned in episode one. And because I, some of these things are just so interesting to me and I can't thank you guys enough for finding some of these similar, these things interesting that, um, that I also find interesting too. So it's great to be growing a community and help us grow. Let people know about it too. That's what you guys have been doing so far. So thank you guys so much for tuning into the insightful thinkers podcast. We'll be back next Monday as always for more in-depth analysis into a diverse set of topics. Take care, everybody.